Hello, you are watching video lecture number 27, Toward a Democratic Republican Culture. Four sections today, uh, equality, I'm sorry, opportunity and equality for white men, toward a Republican marriage system, Republican motherhood, and raising Republican children. So we're getting away a little bit from the politics, and we're going to talk about some culture and family life uh, in, the, in the early American Republic. So during the first half century of American independence, uh, the citizens of the United States struggled with the implications of the experiment in self-government they had launched in 1776. Uh, many, especially James Madison, were troubled by what they perceived to be the selfish and short-sighted policies of the states under the Articles of Confederation, uh, and the drafting and ratification of the Constitution provided them with some reassurance uh, that good, disinterested government would finally prevail. The plans for the new capital city embodied this hopeful vision of a well-ordered republic, uh, in which a separation of powers, uh, coupled with a carefully constructed balance among the branches of government, uh, might advance the good of the whole despite the defects of human nature. In a republic, as Thomas Jefferson explained, uh, because the people were the ultimate guardians of their own liberty, uh, it was crucial that they be rendered safe through education. Uh, thus, he proposed a broadly based educational system in Virginia uh, aimed at raising the, uh, quote, mass of the people to the high ground of moral respectability necessary to their own safety and to orderly government. Uh, Benjamin Rush, the Philadelphia physician and Jefferson's friend, agreed that a suitable education was essential to the health of the Republic, uh, but he believed that no system would be complete without a provision for educating females. Mothers, after all, would be the first teachers responsible for, quote, uh, instructing their sons in the principles of liberty and government. Unfortunately, for those who yearned after liberty and orderly government, uh, the people often behaved in ways that seemed incompatible with such ends. Uh, Hugh Henry uh, Brackenridge's alter ego, Captain Farrago, was dumbfounded to discover that the sovereign masses were intent on exercising their newfound constituent power so foolishly. Uh, and while plans for a respectable federal city were being implemented, some of its potential occupants were anything but respectable. Uh, Madison was mortified by the affair of Lyon and Griswold, uh, but even more disturbed that it had become a topic of tedious and disgraceful debates in Congress. To Abigail Adams, uh, the dirty affair of Lyons was symptomatic of the decline of American politics. So let's take a closer look at this towards a democratic republican culture by starting with our first section, opportunity and equality for white men. After independence, many Americans in the northern states embraced a democratic republicanism that celebrated political equality and social mobility, at least for white males. Uh, these citizens, primarily members of the middle class, also redefined the nature of the family and of education by seeking more egalitarian marriages uh, and more affectionate ways of rearing and educating their children. Some Americans from long distinguished families questioned the morality of a social order based on mobility uh, and financial success. Now by mobility I'm talking about the ability to uh, increase your status. Uh, it's, it's the rags to riches American dream story. That's social mobility. If somebody who has a great idea, who has uh, an entrepreneurial spirit uh, and the willingness to advance, well, they can do that, okay? So these long established families were the ones that, that they weren't too sure about whether or not this would work. The expansion of the suffrage then changed the tone of politics. Uh, Americans increasingly rejected the deferential political views of Federalists. So as more Americans voted, the Federalists lost power. 
Uh, as legislatures eliminated proper property qualifications for voting by white men, they erected barriers for women and black men, uh, regardless of their wealth. Uh, custom and prejudice ruled out their participation in public affairs. Okay, so let's look at the Republican marriage system then, our next section. The controversy over women's political rights mirrored a debate over authority within the household. European and American husbands had long dominated their wives and controlled all of the family's property. Women argued that their subordination was at odds with the Republican belief in equal natural rights. Uh, economic and cultural changes eroded also uh, customary paternal authority uh, as parents could no longer use land as an incentive to control their children's lives and marriages. Young men and women began to be influenced by the new cultural attitude of sentimentalism, uh, which originated in Europe as part of the Romantic movement and celebrated the importance of feelings. As the passions of the heart overwhelmed the cool logic of the mind, uh, a new marriage system appeared. Uh, rather than, than uh, seeking to control them, fathers now sought to protect the best interests of their children in their marriages. Theoretically, the Republican ideal of uh, companionate marriage gave wives equality with their husbands. But in reality, husbands still controlled the property uh, and governments accepted no obligation to prevent domestic abuse. Uh, though few sought divorces, uh, before 1800, most petitioners for divorce charged their spouses with neglect, uh, abandonment, or adultery. Uh, after 1800, emotional grounds dominated divorce petitions. Our next section is Republican motherhood. The main responsibilities of a married woman were running the household and raising the children. Uh, at the beginning of the 19th century, the United States experienced a sharp decline in the birth rate, uh, and this was caused, uh, it, its causes included the migration of men, uh, which left women without mates for life, uh, or it delayed marriage and thus delayed childbirth, uh, and it also an increase in the deliberate limitation on the size of families, which were uh, early methods of birth control. Fewer children meant fathers could provide more adequately for each, while mothers were no longer willing to spend all of their active years bearing and rearing children. Uh, political leaders called on women uh, then to become Republican mothers who would correctly shape the characters of American men. Christian ministers readily embraced the idea of Republican motherhood, uh, though most, not all, urged their audiences to dismiss the idea of public roles for women, such as voting and holding office. So let's look closer at Republican motherhood uh, by uh, our next section, Raising Republican Children. Unlike the English custom of primogeniture, most American states required that the estate of a man be divided among all his children if he died without a will. Some felt that republicanism encouraged American parents to relax parental discipline and give their children greater freedom. A rationalist, rationalist mode of child rearing became the preference among families in the well-to-do and the rapidly expanding middle class. Uh, influenced by the Enlightenment belief that children were rational creatures uh, who could be trained to act properly and responsibly. By contrast, uh, many poor families influenced by the Second Great Awakening uh, had much stricter authoritarian child-rearing child practices. The values taught within families were crucial uh, because most education at this time took place within the home. In the 1790s, then, uh, Bostonian Caleb Bingham called for an equal distribution of knowledge to make us emphatically a republic of letters. Uh, and Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Rush were in agreement. And they both proposed ambitious schemes for a comprehensive system of primary and secondary schooling. Uh, ordinary citizens thought such educational proposals smacked of elitism. So they were worried that it, it was another ploy by the rich to take over. 
Although the constitutions of many states encouraged the use of public resources to fund primary schools, uh, there was not much progress in this arena until the 1820s. So to instill self-discipline and individual enterprise in students, uh, reformers uh, chose textbooks that praised honesty and hard work while they condemned things like gambling, drinking, and laziness. Uh, American history was also required learning. A man named Noah Webster championed the goal of American intellectual greatness, uh, and his blue-backed speller, first published in 1783, gave Americans of all backgrounds a common vocabulary and grammar. Other than Washington Irving, then, uh, no American author was well known in Europe. Uh, not until the 1830s and 1840s would American-born authors, part of the American Renaissance, uh, make a significant contribution to the great literature of the Western world. Okay, this does conclude video lecture number 27. So at this time, please continue on with your notes and your study.